Hey, nine fives. Sorry once again that I have to have a, a guest teacher in today, but oh well, these things happen. And what I've got for you today is a little continuation of the notes we did last time. If you look back to your notes, this was the last example we did, and we called this method two. And I'm going to basically do a similar question to this. And as you're going to see, all I'm going to change about it is one little thing, one little twist to it. I'm actually going to change it to this. You see the subtle difference between the two questions? And that's going to have some repercussions on how it works out. So uh, on, on your, your notes, call this example five. I'll give you a sec to copy it down. It looks a lot like example four, which we did in two methods. We'll do this one in two methods as well. So we'll start with this one and call it method one. And it's going to look like this. Remember how method one works? Method one works by taking this mixed number and changing it to an improper fraction. So two times four plus one makes it nine fourths. Don't forget it's a negative. And then this would be one times three plus one, which is four thirds. That one's a positive. My common denominator for this is twelfths. I times four by three to get to twelve. So I have to times nine by three, giving me twenty-seven. And I times three by four to get to twelve. So four times four is sixteen. Now I combine those two things, 27 negatives plus 16 positives. I think of that in my head as 27 minus 16, which is 11. But I have more negatives than I do positives, so it's a negative 11. And there is the final answer. So if I do that by method 1, it's pretty straightforward. Now the same question done in method 2, I'll give you again a sec to copy down method 2 and the question. The same question actually gets a little more complicated if I use the other method. Now remember, here's how the other method works. So copy down the question, negative 2 and a quarter plus 1 and 1 third. In method 2, I deal with the whole number parts separately from the fraction parts. And again, just like last week, I remember that that, that 1 quarter is also a negative fraction. So from there, I add the integer part. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And this part I still need a common denominator for. That would be negative 3 twelfths. And that would be 4 twelfths. Try to keep up to me. And look what happens this time. See, this part of the answer is negative 1. But this part of the answer is actually positive 1 twelfth because this number is not as negative as that number is positive. So look at the, the way that I, I can't just put this together here. Remember when I use red, I'm making a mistake on purpose. I can't just call that negative 1 and a 12 because this part of the number wasn't negative. It was positive. So I have to think in my head that negative 1 is negative 12 twelfths plus 1 twelfth. And that's how I get the same answer I had last time. Let me get that out of the way. Which was negative 11 twelfths, which, as you see, is the same answer we got a second ago. That is what this little last step here, which I would probably do mentally because I've done this a lot, but if you're not used to it, this method can be a little trickier when you have an example where you're adding opposites or you're subtracting and one fraction is smaller than the other and you end up having to take away from a smaller fraction. So there is the first example. From there, We'll, call, we'll start a, a new little topic in your notes, and that topic is subtracting rationals. So I'll give you a second to catch up to me and write that down. My guest teacher can feel free to pause the video if at any time uh, he feels that you're falling a bit behind. So subtracting rationals is the title. And the first example we're going to do for this, first of all, we're going to remember a rule. And you learned this rule way back when you first learned integers in grade 7. Change all subtracts to add the opposite. For example, our first example will be to take negative 3.51 and subtract positive 7.42. Let me make myself a little room to work here. So again, my rule is add the opposite. So negative 3.51 add the opposite, which is 7.42, but it's a negative. See, this is a positive number right now. I have to make that, oops, I have to make that add a negative. And when I add two negatives, I just put their values together. So these are decimals, so I might want to put them together by adding them in columns. 
So I end up with negative 10.93. I knew it was negative because I added two negative values together. So we'll call that example, and I'll give you a sec to catch up to me. Just in case you didn't quite finish writing the rule down, I'll give you a sec to catch up to me. All right, seconds up. Here's example two. I'll chunk this for you to make it look a little better. So for example two, copy that one down. Let's do subtracting a couple of mixed numbers. So I have five and two thirds, and from that I'd like to subtract seven and three quarters. Once again, I can do this in two different methods. I'm going to do them both on the same screen just to save some room this time. So first of all, I change it to add the opposite. To me, this is no longer a subtract. I am adding a negative. So maybe write that down. Yes, you should probably write down the word think, because that is the way you think of this question. I'll give you a sec to catch up to me. Five and two thirds add negative seven and three quarters. Now from there, let's do this in two methods. Again, you could split your page in half maybe, and we'll do them on two sides. Method number one is to change to an improper fraction. So I have five times three plus two, which is 17 thirds. And then I have seven times four plus three, which is 31 quarters. And I'm adding a negative. Sorry that my smart board's a bit off. Let me see if I can fix that. 17 thirds plus the negative of, again, 31 quarters. That's a bit better. Then from there, I have to change this to a common denominator. In that case, it's twelfths. I have to think, what did I do to 3 to make it 12? Well, I times it by 4. 4 17s would be uh, 68. And over here, what did I do to 4 to make 12? I times it by 3. 3 31s is 93. Notice how big my numbers are getting on me here. I guess I can make that go away now. Come on. So I have to think about what positive 68 add negative 93 is. So in my head, I'm, I might do this as scrap work somewhere. I'm doing 93 minus 68, and I have to borrow to do that. So that's 13 minus 8 is a 5. 8 minus 6 is a 2. And I remember that the negative has more value than the positive. So this 25 for an answer is actually a negative 25. So the final answer is negative 2, because 12 goes into 25 24 times, and 1 12th left over. So that is the method one solution for this question. Method two solution, do this on the other side of the page, is to take the integer part and do it separately from the whole number part. Let me just move the screen down for a sec. It's two thirds and negative three quarters. So the two thirds part is positive, but the three quarters part is negative. And I almost treat it like two separate questions. 5 add negative 7 is negative 2. That part's easy. And this part here, this, the fraction part, I again go to twelfths. It's the same common denominator. But I have much smaller fractions to deal with. 2 thirds is 8 twelfths, and 3 quarters is 9 twelfths. So I have negative 2 add negative 1 twelfth. And I can, they're both negative, so I can just put them together, unlike the last fraction example we did, and get that. I'll give you a sec to catch up to me, in case you need it. And again, my guest teacher can feel free to pause it if necessary. All right, seconds up. And that's it for examples today. Now from here, you can have the rest. Oh, my word, I have lots of windows open. You can uh, use the rest of this class to take a look here at Homework Online at what I've put on here. There you are, 9. Oh, no, you're not 9-1. Nine 9-1 one. Nine did this lesson already last week. 9-5, there we go. 9-5. You are going to um, now use the rest of the class to work on page 111, numbers 3 to 11, and 112, 13 to 16, 20, and 22. Page 111 should be done for tomorrow. Page 112 maybe we'll make do either Friday or Monday. We'll see when I get back how that goes. All right. Good luck. Have a good rest of your class.